actors work best as systems. An actor can launch and communicate with another actor. The actor that launches the actor is called the calling actor and the actor that has been launched is called the nested actor. A well-designed actor system will end up having this tree-like hierarchy where actors are allowed to communicate up and down their individual branches. However, actors are not allowed to communicate between branches directly. If an actor does want to talk to another actor on a different branch, then they will have to go to the same common caller. This is to reduce coupling, reduce complexity and really increase the possibility of code reuse. Let's take the chat room as an example. We have a server actor which is going to act as our root caller and that will launch as many nested actors as it wants to. These nested actors are going to be the brains behind the clients for our chat windows. These chat window clients will then launch a user interface actor. So you can see that we've ended up with this tree-like system. If the server actor wants to send a message to everyone on the chat room, it can do because they are all the nested actors of that client. However, if one chat window wants to talk directly to another, it can't. They have to go through the server in then back down again. Let's implement launching and keeping a track of launched actors in our chat room. So here we have our project from the last video. Just to remind ourselves of the functionality, we can run the launcher. And if we click launch our chat window, we get a dialog box and send global chat, we get another dialog box and we used a user event in order to close the application. In this demonstration, Let's create another couple of actors in order to launch them. The first actor we're going to create is a chat room model. And we'll talk about why I'm calling it a model in a future video. The second one we'll create is a chat room controller. The controller is going to act as a, our user interface where we have our controls, hence the name controller. Great, so we've created our actors there. Now let's go into the server where we have the method to launch nested actor. So we have new launch new chat window here. So if you look on the block diagram, instead of having this dialog box there, let's now implement some functionality. So let's use a new function of launch nested actor, which is in data communication, actor framework, launch nested actor, like so. We now need to tell this actor which actor to launch. The actor that we want to launch is the chat window model. So let's go to chat room model. We then drag across the class. And we could wire it to uh, the nested actor input. The output of this launch nested actor is nested actors enqueue. Remember from previous videos, the enqueue is like the address, it's the reference to that actor. So we need to keep a hold of this. The way that we're going to keep a hold of this one is to keep an array of these enqueues in our actor's private data. So if we go to server then server control for the private data we're going to put down an array and then from the dependencies we can find the enqueue class message enqueue and we'll rename this as well to chat windows now we can save and close this so every time we launch one of these nested actors, we want to add to the array. So we can do that with a simple uh, bundle and unbundle with a build array function. And there we have it. 
Now, there's one key thing that I want to point out to you here. That is how we're going to stop our actors. So on the input here, we have auto stop, and that's by default true. In the next video, I'm going to explain what auto stop is and how we could override or change the stop behavior of our actors. For now though, we'll just keep it as the default. To show you that our actors are being launched and that they are shutting down correctly, let's use the debugging tool I showed you to show actor call front panel. We can have that as true, but remember that's only a debugging tool. Then go to our launcher VI and click run. So if we launch this VI, we have the chat room server, which we saw in the previous video. If we launch chat window, you can see that new actors have now been launched. And if we click on the close panel button, you can see that the application shuts down. However, I'm going to go into much more detail about the shutdown routine that's happening in the actor framework in the next video. We also need the chat room model to launch its user interface. We're going to do that in the actor core of the chat room model. So let's create a VI for override of actor core. We can save this. We create some space. We're going to put down a, a launch nested actor. And now we're going to drag across the chat room controller class. And like before, we need to keep a track of the enqueue from our chat window controller. So to do that, let's open up the chat room model control and then drag in an enqueue class. So again, dependencies, VI lib, actor framework, and then message enqueue. And we'll rename this to be user interface. And save that and close. We'll make some more real estate on our actor cores front panel, and then bundle by name, the new enqueue. And we'll save that. So we can see something when we launch our chat window controller. Let's have a quick override of actor core in chat room controller so the front panel shows up. And we'll just save this. Wonderful. It's also worth pointing out that I removed the show front panel for the chat window model for when that was launched. So if we go into server and remind ourselves, launch new chat window, I removed that true flag here. So the only uh, user interface apart from server that we expect to see now is chat room controller when that is launched. So let's test out our functionality. If we run our launcher, we can launch chat windows. And you can see I'm able to dynamically create multiple chat room models, which then launches a single controller each. And I know that it's the controller because it says chat room controller dot LVlib. And now I can use panel close to shut down our application. Now we're able to launch our actors and we saved those in queues in the actor private data. I'm now going to show you how we can send messages from a calling actor down to the nested actors. To demonstrate this, let's have a look at our very bottom nested actor, which is the controller, and have a message screen up there. So at the end of this demonstration, we'll be able to send a message with the data of some text from our server actor through the model through to the controller. To do that, let's go to our chat room controller and actor core. I'll we'll scroll down to get some empty space. 
and let's put down a string indicator. I'll make the text on this string indicator a little bigger. And we can save. A quick method of updating this string indicator is simply to use VI server. So I'm going to create a reference to this indicator. So create reference and I will bundle this into the actor private data. I just renamed it from string to message. So we'll save that and using a bundle by name function we'll bundle it into the actor. Let us now create a method called update message. So go to new and this time I'm going to choose VI for dynamic dispatch because later on in this series, I'm going to show you how we can implement different user interfaces. So we've called that update message. And we'll use a value property node in order to update it. The new value is going to come from our calling actor in the form of a message. So to transfer that data, we just need to create a control. We'll wire it to our connector pane. Save. And then create a message for this. So right click actor framework, create message. Caller of chat room controller is chat room model. So we need to do the same in model. Let's create a method in chat room model called update message and again that is going to create a message and this is going to take a message input so we'll have that as a control on the front panel now instead of updating the message on the front panel instead we're going to take the message data and send it down to our nested actor, which is the user interface. So if you go to chat room controller again and messages for this actor and drag across the send update message VI. Now the send update message VI, that needs the message in queue and the message itself. So the message in queue, remember we saved that into our class private data so we can unbundle it. So we have user interface, and can wire it like so, and then the data we can wire to our control. We can also wire in our error clusters. So we'll save and close this. We will also need to create a message for it. So if we right click update message, go to act framework, and then create message. So this is now scripting in the background. We can save that. The final step is to go to the serve actor, go to send global chat. And instead of having this one button dialog box, let's instead delete that and send the update message to our chat room models. Now remember that we have a dynamic number of chat room models. And to get over that, we created an array of enqueuers and stored that in our class private data. So if we unbundle our class private data, we have our chat windows. We can then use a for loop to auto index through all of those enqueuers and broadcast this message. So it looks like here, when we created our broadcast message VI, or rather the send global chat VI, we didn't create a front panel control in order to send that message. So I'll show you a really handy feature now in Active Framework. So because we forgot to put this string control down, we'll call that message. I can now wire it to uh, 
the connector pane and save. I'll now go to messages for this actor, send global chat message, which is a message we created in the last uh, video, and right click actor framework and then rescript message. The number of times that this has helped me out is phenomenal. I'm always forgetting to wire up the connector pane. Now wire up this message and save. Now this message is actually being launched in the actor core of server. So if we go into actor core, we see we are sending the message here. So we will wire up the message data. When we run our application now, we expect to be able to send a message from our server to all of our nested actors. Let's close those and open up our launcher and click run. We have chat room server here. Let's launch chat window and let's actually launch a couple of these. And now this is where we're going to demonstrate that message. So if I say hello everyone and send global chat, you can see that all of our nested actors received that message. And if we click close, our application terminates. Okay, so just as a quick recap, in actor core of the server, we are sending a message to the server, so essentially from here to here, saying send global chat. The send global chat method in the server class, the server actor, is this VI. This VI takes that message, it then sends it to all of the nested chat windows. Those nested chat windows will receive that message if and execute the update message VI, which is here. We'll then unbundle the chat room model user interface and send a message to the controller. And that controller then uses a property node to update the front panel of its actor core override. Okay, so I know at first of this messaging system inside Act Framework, can be a little confusing, especially if you have lots and lots of nested actors and need to send messages all over the place. And this is where it becomes really important to design your application up front before you start implementing your code. That way you can plan out all of your messaging routes on paper, and then it's just a case of implementing it in LabVIEW. In the next video, I'm going to talk about stopping the actors and keeping a track of which actors have stopped. As always, please subscribe, give this video a like and leave your comments below if you have any feedback. Cheers everyone.